So, The Part Does Not Die is an African novel written by Paid Police. It's on this note, I welcome you to Literature Hub 247, a free online literature class. This is a unique platform where the arts and science of literature are discussed. Earlier on this platform, we discussed the prologue, the plot summary, as well as chapters 1 to 9 of So the Part Does Not Die. This is chapter 10. If you need the link to the previous videos on this novel, make your request through the comment section and it will be sent to you. Let's now go into the classroom. Before now, Fina is in love with Kami, and the love between them was stronger every day. So, let's go to chapter 10. Fina has been sending money home since she received her first paycheck in America. $100 one month, $200 and sometimes $50 at times, depending on how she has money. The money is to help her mother and Isa, her sister. Every three months, she sends goods containing filial things to them also. Fina's mother can buy some things with the money. Isa is given 10% of the amount of money sent home by Fina. After Nabu, Fina's mother died. Fina wanted to reduce the amount sent home and the frequency. But she couldn't because of the worsening civil war in Syria alone and Isa's newborn baby. The mining company that engages Isa shut down because of the war. She is now jobless. The new baby and the parent become the responsibility of Vina. Fina thinks the situation will not last long when the war ends and Hassan, Isa's boyfriend, will soon find a job. Fina's wishes never come to pass. Nine months after Sarata was born, Isa gave birth to another child. Sarata is Isa's uh, child. That is the firstborn. So she has not given birth to another child. Fina is enraged when she hears this and asks Isa whether they know about condoms. Isa replies that the condoms sold in Syria alone are not good. She has that Hassan is big. Fina responds that Hassan should wear a dozen of the inferior condoms and that she doesn't want to hear about another child. She slams the phone. The war in Syria alone worsens, and Isa puts a call across to Fina one morning that rebels have invaded Freetown. Freetown is the capital of Syria alone. They need money to transport themselves in order not to be killed. After running Eta Sketa to make arrangements for the money, five days later, Isa and her family escape to Conakry, the capital of Guinea. It is Fina that runs Eta Sketa to get money for them, and they are able to escape to Conakry. Fina is happy when she hears that the left return. However, the news from BBC World News about an overloaded boat on the sea sardines are hurt. She feels guilty for not allowing them to travel by here as earlier demanded by Isa. Almost two weeks after the sardine news, Isa calls that they are alive and are refugees in Guinea. She says they need money for their hubkeep and registration as refugees. Fina accepts the increase in her financial obligations because she doesn't want to cut the rope. She reduces her expenses and allows Kami to pay for their dinners. The deteriorating condition in free town is a signal that Isa and her family will not go back soon. Hence, Fina will not be relieved of their expenses soon. Kami complains that the burdens from Isa and her family affect them. Fina responds that Isa is the only person she has. Kami then advises that Fina should allow Isa and her husband to think of the way out. They should not be encouraged to be lazy. Fina explains that they are refugees in Kunakri and no job is available for them. 
Kami concludes that Isa and her husband are just taking advantage of Fina. He adds that he's willing to give them a loan that will be returned when they start working. Fina turns it down that he should not worry and says Isa is a problem and we handle it. She decides never to ask for money from Kami, especially for her sister. She decides to look for part-time work and she applies for a home equity loan a few days later. Kami shows his displeasure when he hears that Fina got a loan. She says she should have told him about it. He leaves Fina in annoyance. The next evening, Kami prepared a delicious dinner of shrimp served in a fragrant coconut stew. Fina is hungry and at the same time worry about Kami's behavior the previous day. She glues to him and places her head on his shoulder. Kami pulls away from her and Fina says she wishes there is something she can say to make him happy. Kami hesitates to ask Fina for something or make a request. Fina then feels that he wants to back out of the wedding. Kami has have you ever considered braces? Braces are worn on the teeth to straighten them. You know, Kami is worried about the about Fina's teeth. That's what she, he has been thinking of. So she now asks the question. I mean, he now asks the question now. Have you ever considered braces? A dentist in the United States has recommended braces for Fina, but she doesn't go back to the dentist again. Fina explains that she was born with it. It's part of her. She says that if Kame doesn't like it, they should call up the wedding. Kame responds. Kame responds that Fina should forget that he ever mentioned it. So Fina is trying to tell Kame there that if he's not happy with her teeth, they should call up the wedding. There's not much argument until Fina says she's tired and wants to sleep. Since then, she has been taking extra care of her teeth. As the wedding day draws nearer, she's having some negative feelings. Six weeks into the wedding, her spirit is lifted when she discovers that she is pregnant. She doesn't know how Carmen will take the news of the pregnancy. She thereby prepares its favorite food. That is the love rice and stew before telling him. Kame is extremely happy. He carries her in his arms and plants kisses on her face and head. He tells her that she's too heavy already. They settle down to plan for the baby. Kame says he will be named Donovan after his brother is a boy. Fina argues that he will be named Amadou after her father. And if he get, he will be named Demosu, which means firstborn daughter. And remember, Demosu is a uh, Fina's uh, sister that died. Kami says it's Celeste after her mother. They agree that she will be Demosu Celeste to reflect her dual heritage. So that is chapter 10 of So the Path Does Not Die. Please, if you are new on this platform, just click on the subscribe button. So that will be part of this class and the bell icon so that when we release any video you are going to be notified like the video invite your friends and colleagues to join us if you have any question or comments send it to the comment section and it will be attended to teachers in the house introduce your students to this platform parents also introduce your children to this platform let's meet in the next chapter god bless